So now we're going to look at heat capacity. Heat capacity is measuring how temperature changes as heat is added to material. They vary with different materials. So we take the same mass of aluminum and water. We add the same amount of heat to both of them. The aluminum will get hotter than the water. The temperature rises faster for the aluminum than it does for water. So heat capacity is our way of measuring that relationship between heat added or removed and the change in temperature. We have three ways that we do our heat capacity. One way that's good for objects like a um, calorimeter or machine that uh, is used to measure, a device that is used to measure uh, heat of reactions. So if we're doing a whole object here, then we just have our heat, our heat capacity is equal to our heat capacity times the change of temperature. So the units for our heat capacity in this case is going to be joules per Kelvin, or it could be joules per degree Celsius, but joules per Kelvin is the uh, uh, direction we're moving in recording these. But this is for a single object. If we have something that can change in size, like the amount of water, we have a solution that we're reacting things in, then the amount of water can differ. We don't want to have to measure heat capacity each and every time that we do our experiment. So the way that we can handle this is by doing heat capacity per mass in terms of per gram. So we know that if we have uh, the same temperature uh, increase in 10 grams of water versus 100 grams of water, the 100 grams of water is going to be about 10 times more. So the, the mass will scale up directly with the amount of heat that we need. So the, this is an easy one because we can go out and weigh the mass of things on scale. So this is the most common one that we use. And um, the units are in heat capacity in this case will be joules per gram Kelvin. And of course, we can also see that it's joules per gram degree Celsius. I'll show why in a little bit. And uh, sometimes we find it useful to look at it on a per mole basis. On a per mole basis, there's some logic behind why certain compounds would have a similar uh, molar heat capacity. Uh, and when we use moles instead of grams as our amount of substance, the units on our heat capacity in that case would be joules per mole Kelvin. So let's apply this and figure out how much heat we need to raise the temperature of 454 grams of tin from 25 degrees Celsius to 229 degrees Celsius. We have to be given our specific heat capacity. So a specific heat capacity of tin is 0.277 joules per gram Kelvin. So in the equation, uh, heat equals mass times specific heat times delta T. We need our delta T. So that's final minus initial, so we do 229 minus 25, and we get 204 degrees Celsius. Well, the units over here are Kelvin, so let's convert to Kelvin. We add 273 both to both numbers. We subtract them, and we get 204 Kelvin. And this is true for our change of temperature, delta T. For delta T, Celsius and Kelvin are interchangeable because they were made to be the same degree size, so they're always the same numerical value. So now that we have our delta T, we put it into our equation and we um, run it through our calculator and we get to 2.57 times 10 to the fourth joules. That's 25,000 joules. And uh, we usually write heats in terms of kilojoules. It's a more appropriate unit compared to joules. So that's 25.7 kilojoules. So we usually report our heat in joules but our specific heat is always, we report our heat in kilojoules, but our specific heat is always in joules. So we always have to watch out for that unit conversion going on. And one of the properties of our specific heat capacity, uh, heat capacity and molar heat capacity are all the same properties. So in this case, we're holding a, the amount of heat and mass the same. So our larger heat capacities 
will result in a smaller delta T. Small heat capacities will result in a larger delta T. So if we compare water and aluminum, aluminum has a small heat capacity, water has a large heat capacity. So when we add the same amount of heat to the same mass, the aluminum gets hot. Its small heat capacity means it gets hot, it gets a bigger delta T. The water with the larger heat capacity heats up more slowly. So let's look at a couple more problems we can do with this. So we do have um, but the total four variables. I'm not solving for mass at any point in this, but uh, we're going to solve now for the specific heat capacity. So we're adding heat, 11.2 kilojoules to 145 grams of benzene. We raise the temperature from 25 to 70 Celsius. What is the heat capacity of benzene? Um, I did it automatically when I wrote it down, but we're going to have to convert our kilojoules into joules. So 11.2 kilojoules, 11,200 joules. Uh, we calculate our delta T, 70 minus 25 is 45 degrees Celsius. And as I showed on the last board here, that is equal to 45 Kelvin. So we solve our equation for our specific heat capacity, heat over mass, delta T. So we put those numbers in, write it to our calculator, and we get 1.72 joules per gram Kelvin. And um, here, let me give uh, for comparison, heat capacity of water is 4.184 joules per gram. Kelvin. So this is the one that we'll be using a lot uh, in our calorimeter calculations that are coming up. Now another direction that we like to go is calculating uh, the change in temperature or the final temperature. So in this case we're starting with 376 grams of aluminum at 398 Kelvin. Now we lose 4.85 kilojoules. So I automatically just convert that to joules, 4.85 times 10 to joules. What is, is its final temperature? So we're given our specific heat capacity of gold. We rearrange our equation for delta T, so Q over M and specific heat. We put in our values that we have and we get 101 Kelvin. Uh, we're I had given our initial temperature in Kelvin, so we're not going to worry about changing our units. We are losing heat. Um, working with this precisely, our um, heat and delta T have signs that will parallel each other. But in this case, we'll just go based on the language here. We're losing heat. Um, so we know that we have to subtract our delta T off the initial temperature. We know that temperature is going to go down. Otherwise, losing heat would also mean putting in a negative for our heat, which would give us a negative delta T, and that would also give us our um, solve it in a more strict mathematical way. But in this case, we know we're going to be losing temperature because we're losing heat. So we take our initial temperature, subtract off the change of temperature, and the final temperature will be 297 uh, Kelvin. 